Bills New Year back in today. One of you guys' favorite videos. We're bringing it back. Roster update investing tier list. S tier, A tier, A plus, A minus, B plus, B minus, etc. And we're not going below B's, man. If there's a C tier player, what the hell are they doing in the video? They're not. So we're going to be doing that today. Now I'm recording this. What the hell's today? Tuesday? I'm recording this Tuesday. It's going to be out Thursday. So prices might be different on some of these players. Keep that in mind. Now listen up. We're starting the video off very simple. Like button, subscribe button, Discord membership. Run it up now. Now, Freddy Peralta is the first guy. Now I'm expecting we have the roster video coming out Wednesday, the day before this. His Freddy Peralta's price is probably going to be cooked. But let's be real here. Right now, when he's below 1650, below 1650 stubs, he is a friggin' B plus, A minus tier investment. You know why? It's risk free, essentially risk free, and it's a pitcher flip opportunity. I could care less. You know, does Freddie Peralta have the talent to go diamond? Personally, I'm going to say yes. However, he has a high troll factor. This guy, he, sometimes he pitches with drunk goggles on, 99 pitches through three innings pitched, 16 walks. Got to get those numbers down. Got to have some more control. With that said, he does get a lot of strikeouts a lot of the time, and he had a pretty nice bounce back start his last time out with seven innings pitched, eight strikeouts, which is why I like him below 1650. Christian Yelich, man. Christian Yelich is very interesting. Where are the home runs, though? At 2,400 stubs, I'd be more inclined to sell Christian Yelich. Keep in mind, this is a long, <laughs> a long update window. Now, common defense, maybe he goes up in defense. You know, defending, I'm not here to predict fielding boost. Maybe we'll have a separate video to predict that. I don't, I'm not a big fan of predicting fielding boost. It's a lot harder. With that said, in terms of hitting, his contact is, is very solid in real life. He's still playing pretty well. And he has hit a home run as of recent. But he's got to hit about five home runs up the update period, in my opinion, to earn diamond just on hitting alone. 2,400 stubs, low-key a sell. Four-week window this update period. I'm going to put Yelich as a B-tier investment right now. Honestly, at 1,900, 1,850, ah, I'm leaning towards B-minus, but I'm probably going to put him at B-tier right now. Still a solid player to hold and own. You can see I'm, I'm still holding all of mine. Francisco, holy hiccup. I had some hot sauce yesterday, man. Strawberry scorpion, ghost pepper hot sauce. It said it goes well in dessert and salad. Stop lying, bro. I put that in my mouth and mm, my, my tongue was swollen. Francisco Lindor. Listen, I like him as actually a pretty strong investment right here. This is a guy where I don't predict fueling yet, but if I was, Lindor deserves a boost to diamond just on fueling alone. And his hitting numbers in real life support that. He's got like 13 home runs and he's batting above 300 in his last 15 games. The hitting numbers are there, the power numbers are there, and the fielding numbers are there. Leaning towards him as an early diamond candidate at 1,900 subs, though. Let's see if we can get his price down. I'm going to put him as an A-tier investment right here for, for uh, Francisco Indoor. George Kirby, I'm not a believer. Now, the thing is, he already has a built-in buffer. What that means is he, he deserved to go diamond last update, and they didn't give it to him meaning he's already starting this update as a favorable candidate to go diamond, and his season stats show that he should, that he should be a diamond. I like George Kirby as a B-plus tier investment. You know, he's probably an A-tier investment, A-minus. I just, I'm not convinced. I've never been convinced on his talent, so I just think I'm going to put him as a B-plus tier investment for now. Jack Flaherty. You know, he's cheaper than George Kirby, and personally, I think he's been playing better than George Kirby on the season. His strikeout numbers are really good, and I think he's been playing very well. And look at the difference. I think that Jack Flaherty, look at some of these other starting pitchers. Their clutch is a little bit higher. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I'm just tripping. But Jack Flaherty, man, if he can get the, if he can get some outs, if there's guys in scoring position, and he gets some outs when there's batters up to bat, he can get a clutch boost, which could really, really get him to diamond, right? Like he doesn't even need, all he needs is a, is a plus five to clutch and he'll earn diamond. So I like Flaherty a lot. You can see I still have 1,000 of him from when he was a bronze. That's right. I like Flaherty, man, as an A minus tier investment. I think he deserves diamond. I think he's trending towards diamond. He also is projected as a diamond uh, after his last start. So this is our first projected diamond starting pitcher with the formula we use. Joe Ryan. Joe Ryan is projected it as a plus one right now in terms of price in terms of actual projections he's projected, he's, he's up he's trending up but in terms of a plus one i mean where's the roi an 83 overall it's hard man 
it's hard because they have to go diamond to make the good stubs. Are you, are you, my, uh, 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 it doesn't get me excited, man. I'm going to put him as a B tier investment. His price will go below thir uh, around 1300 though. And then, the, and then you're talking maybe B plus. It's a, it's a good pitcher pull opportunity. Maybe he plays his way on the field's radar in four weeks. Maybe he's 2100 subs. So you can make stubs here. I'm going to put him as B tier for now though. But I do like him as a buy because his price does go down pretty fast. Logan Gilbert. Logan Gilbert, man, 1450 stubs right now. Let it go down. He's projected as a plus one right now. So he's already projected as an 84 overall, which is pretty good. You know, you're not really going to be risking much right here unless he has a couple bad starts and he somehow gets downgraded. Ah, I'm, I'm debating what tier to put him in because in terms of talent, I, I think that Logan Gilbert has A tier talent, like A plus. Like this guy is Tyler Glasnow 2.0. If you watch him pitch, very similar mechanics. But I mean, <clears throat> do I believe in him? I used to believe, then he gave up nine runs and one inning pitch against the Twins. After that, things are a little bit different. But I think this guy could potentially be a Cy Young candidate in years to come. And I think that Logan Gilbert, I'm going to have to put him in A- minus tier for now. You know, his price right now and the fact he's an 83 overall holds him back from being S tier. But I like him as an A-. minus. Max Scherzer at 1800 It's time to sell. This guy has, he's had two good starts coming back from injury, but at 1,800, that's, he's already hes already projected as a plus one. Honestly, not a bad time to sell right now on Scherzer. It is a solid pitcher flip opportunity. He is a good caliber of player. I'm going to say that Scherzer is, he's, he's a B tier player, especially at this price. Paul Skeens, Paul Skeens is also going to be B tier. You know, in terms of talent, he's S tier. S tier opportunity, I think he's going to go diamond in four weeks. If he maintains everything, his last start, first start this period was very, very positive. This guy's already projected probably 84, 85, uh, probably 84. He's probably, he's probably projected as an 84 right now with the formula. And with that said, you know, look at his price. He's already 2,900 subs. You can almost sell him as if he was a diamond right now, which I would be doing if I had some Paul Skeens. So with, with that in mind, man, he's, he's got to be B tier for now, just at this price. But if his price changes, I'll let you guys know. We get a bit of an update video. Maybe we can do this video a couple times uh, once every week or something like that. Connor Wong. Connor Wong at 960. I bought 700 of him at 910 subs. The reason why, he's batting 320 in real life and he's got seven home runs. He hits a couple of home runs, gets the 10 home runs in four weeks. We see a power boost. Maybe he goes 83, 84. Uh, if he goes 84, you make 50% of the subs. He's a B tier investment just because uh, he's B or B plus at this price. He might be a B plus investment, you know, in terms of talent and opportunity and attributes, probably a B tier player. You know, there's guys out there with better opportunity, but he's playing really well and he's priced almost at quick sell with no risk. So I like him for that reason. Who else? Uh, this guy could be a decent pitcher of opportunity. Don't mind that. Lopez could be a decent pitcher of opportunity. Monitor Yoshi. Yoshi has his injury. Let's see how he comes back, uh, what the time frame is for that. Ryan Walker. Now, I'm really hoping that I cooked his price up a little bit in yesterday's video because this guy is really, really good in real life. Great number. He had like 59 strikeouts and 43 innings pitch. His K's per nine should go up. His walks per nine is looking good. His hits per nine is looking pretty solid. I mean, I would put this guy at 620 stubs. I'm not even kidding. I would put him as an S tier opportunity right now. Now, when you're seeing this video, his price, I'm guessing his price is probably like 680. We call that the, we call that the TBR impact factor. <laughs> It'll probably be like 680, but at 680, still not a bad buy. He'll probably be like an A minus tier investment. I like him a lot. Who else do we got? Ellie De La Cruz, looking pretty solid hitting wise now. He's finally learning how to hit a baseball again. Again, this guy goes through hot streaks, cold streaks, and whatnot. But I think that Ellie De La Cruz could also potentially get a feeling boost to boost him in overall. Again, hard to predict that. You know, uh, you know, at least from my point of view. I don't have much experience doing it. I like him. I bought 800 at 750 stubs. I'm going to put him as an A minus, yeah, A minus type investment for now. Brian Hudson. This guy's looking pretty solid as well. Great numbers on the year. Good, good strikeout numbers. Really good walk. I don't think this guy's walked a guy in the last 10 innings pitched. So his walks per nine should go up, in my opinion. I'm going to put Brian Hudson, projected 83, in my opinion. And that also could have a good return on investment. You know, you're almost making double your stubs. I like him as an A minus tier investment. Rafael Devers is B tier. Dude's hitting a lot of home runs, but he already has time in hitting, so what goes up? Uh, so he's B tier. Yu Darvish, Yu Darvish is also going to be B tier for now. 
just because he's back. He's not. He's coming back from injury soon. So when he's back from injury, this guy could be Scherzer 2.0. This guy could potentially go to 82 if he gets enough innings, 83. So I'd like him as a long-term play right here. Brennan Doyle, nope, not falling down that rabbit hole again. Austin Riley. Austin Riley, I'm going to put him as a B-plus caliber investment right now. His price? His price is pretty low. He's batting 300 in real life. He's got five homers in his last 15 games. He's finally remembering how to play baseball. On the year, his season stats, he started off really ice cold. And he's working his way up since then, which is why his price is probably so low. I like him long-term as an 83 potential. I think he can go off in a lot of different spots. Francisco Alvarez is another guy who's a pretty solid investment right here. He needs to hit some home runs. Can he hit the home runs? Then he'll go to 83 overall at 650 stubs or less. I'm going to put him as a B plus, maybe even A minus type investment. Daniel Hudson, 600 stubs right now. He's projected already as a plus one. I'd be selling, not going to lie, but he is a B plus caliber investment. Justin Steele, Justin Steele. Uh, he's B plus as well, 480 stubs. This guy is basically a pitcher flip, long-term hold. You should sell him ASAP for 800 stubs right now if that's what his price is looking like when you're watching the video. Zach Gallen, he's back. Back from injury, had a nice bounce back start, which in my opinion, puts him as an A minus tier investment. Really solid bounce back start. He started the year as an 84. I think he, he can potentially earn his way back if he gets his head out of, you know, you know where. Tanner would be not too, not too shabby at all. Really solid strikeout numbers. Last start though, I think he only had six innings pitch and three strikeouts. So that's a little bit concerning. Let's hope he has a bounce back start. Don't be overpaying, but I like him to get a boost. We're going to put him as an A minus B plus tier investment. Probably B plus at this price. Ezekiel Tovar goes right up there with Connor Wong. Uh, you know, kind of a mediocre guy, but he's got 12 home runs. Can he get a boost? I think if he keeps hitting for power, he's cooled off though in the last 15 games. I like him as a B tier player. Cole Reagans, I actually like him as an A minus. I think he has the talent, has the opportunity. It's just about the execution. We'll put him as A minus for now. And I think that might be it. Brandon Nimmo is another guy who could be B tier potentially. Anybody else, Michael King is pretty solid. Uh, Jake Irvin, go check out the roster video, man. Ryan Pepio, you guys know all about it now. And there's the first roster big tier list of season two. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace out. Thanks for watching.